An angel stood before you, challengingly, her spear raised, an expression of joy on her face. Meanwhile, you only had a machete. Thankfully, courtesy of Camilla Carmine, so it was actually a pretty good weapon. As outwardly being one of the weaker demons fighting, you almost had fled when Charlie had given you the chance, but you stayed simply by virtue of liking your room a lot. It was the best sleeping space you ever had in hell, and it was me. And for it, you would die. Again. The angel was aggressively poking at you over and over. The both of you were inside one of the hotel's hallways. Out there you had zero chance. And here at least the angels were forced to walk thanks to the low ceiling. Something the exterminator before you obviously knew, with how annoyed she was with your presence. You fell for a faint attack, earning you a very painful stab into your shoulder. And, wow, you had never been hit by a divine weapon before. At least not with the intent to kill. And you could feel it. Divine energy pouring into your wound. It was like getting hit with a taser after being cut by a red glowing knife. You barely managed to escape the overload of the weapon. And your second death. By the skin of your teeth. Throwing yourself back, probably breaking one or two ribs, judging by the pain. Quickly, on all fours, like a spider, you crawled backwards while the angel angrily stabbed the floor. You needed to get up, or else your head would eventually bump into a wall, and that would be it. The look of impatience on the angel, however, was quite encouraging to keep fighting. And then, luck was finally on your side. Wham! The angel hit a loose floorboard. Annoyed, she reached for the tip of her spear to remove it. And that's when you did something incredibly stupid. Instead of running, you slammed your entire body against the spear, wrapping your arms and legs around it. What the? hissed the angel. At the same time, you were using the machete to saw at the pointy bit. What the hell are you doing? The angel started kicking you, over and over as you kept sawing, her boots slamming on your hand, yet your grip was so tight from the adrenaline going through your body, it was in this moment that the angel took a step back. Fuck. She turned to run, but then a loud cracking indicated you managed to break the spear. The pointy blade was at your left hand now. You spit out a tooth. <laughs> hey, bitch! You pointed at her with it, as blood was coming out of your nose. She had really tried to beat you to a pulp. Why don't you get over here? Let's have some fucking fun! The angel looked behind herself, went back to you, before taking on a boxing stance. She was confident she'd disarm you no problem, and then she would exterminate you for breaking her spear. However, just as her fist connected with your face, and you slashed at her arm, the entire building suddenly began to shake. Something was happening outside. Confused, the two of you stepped towards a nearby balcony, looking up at the roof. Atop the building, a fight was happening. Is that Adam fighting Lucifer? growled the angel angrily. The two were duking it out on the roof. The angel was dumbfounded, and it seemed like everyone had stopped fighting. And that's when your grip around the machete tightened. The exorcist didn't even react as you stabbed the spear tip into her neck. 
gold, the blood spewing from the wound like a fountain as she starred in disbelief at her own weapon poking out of her throat just past her chin. Yeah, it was cold-blooded, but necessary for your survival. As once the initial shock of Lucifer's arrival passed, the fighting continued, even more visceral than before. Scared of the act of sin you have just committed, you ran back into the hallway. Now you had two choices. Run upstairs and be obliterated by the crossfire of two demigod-level angels duking it out, or go downstairs and be attacked by an army of bloodthirsty angels. You looked at the course behind yourself. Well, that one was the basic quota you had set for yourself. But then you looked down at your hands. Uh, it probably was the situation that had made that kill so easy. Shaking your head, you get thoughts out of your brain, you ran to your left. You try throwing yourself at the horde, then probably die trying. That way, at least there was a chance an ally caught a bullet for you. However, just as you stepped onto the stairs leading down, the building finally gave up. The hotel falling apart at the seams, crushing you beneath an avalanche of rebar, wood and concrete. When you awoke, you were still buried beneath the rubble of the hotel. Twisted and broken was your body, and you could feel a piece of rebar penetrating your stomach. Warm blood slowly, almost lazily pouring past the wound. As long as you didn't move, it didn't hurt that much. Being buried under rubble really wasn't something you expected tonight. Well, you technically expected worse. Your second death. But then you realize something. What would you do if your body, bent in the shape that it was now, would start to regenerate? Crooked like this. You would need to break all bones once again. Oh, this was terrible. Blood suddenly flowed out of your mouth. Fuck! You gurgled. You're shaking, trying to breathe normally. Tears were running out of your eyes. You were on the verge of passing out again almost not hearing the muffled noises of rock and debris being moved above you, until a light hit your face. Your visage oil was too covered by dirt, dust, tears and blood, and you only barely saw the thing move above you. All you saw was white. Charlie, I got one of your friends! And... and... so... Uh... You whispered, barely audible and weak. They shrugged. I mean, technically correct. Please don't kill me. Please don't. I am so far. I survived until now. You're not dying. I promise. The angel lifted you out of the rubble. Your head hanging low. You felt the arm holding you up. The pain in your lower extremities being blinding, and yet you knew, at the very least, it would not kill you. Since you were already dead. Kel! The voice. That was Charlie's. Thanks for finding her, Dad. You were lied down on something soft. And yet, your grip tightened around the arm holding you. Please. You begged. Um, what? Ugh. The man holding you rolled his eyes, annoyed, but when you looked at your face, he started kneeling down next to you, tightly holding your hand. It's 
Fine, I'm here, my child. He cringed at his own words, but thankfully you couldn't see it through your blurred vision. The man had never given guidance to anyone. It was such an alien feeling, and yet he liked it, in a sort of pathetic kind of way. It was cute. You were cute. That's the gist of it. And so he remained at your side. Uh, Charlie, can you bring me a chair? You were stuck in a delirium due to the blood loss. And after he finally could sit, he sighed. He, of course, was a little peeved, wanting to have his daughter with rebuilding, but if he abandoned you now, Charlie would get mad. Plus, his angelic instincts kept him planted. Awkwardly, he scratched his cheek. Just, uh... So, you know, I, I normally don't do this, especially not to sinners. This earned him puppy eyes from you, and additionally, some weight on his arm as your grip tightened. He forced a sigh, and allowed you to cuddle further into him. Uh, you know, Cal, was it, right? That's short for Cali. Right, right. Wasn't Kenny already the short form of a name? He wondered. Though which one specifically slipped his mind? <sighs> well, it's been seven years since someone held onto my arm like that. Feels kinda nice. And then the angel audibly blushed. D why did I just tell you that? I'm sorry, my dear angel. You mumbled. I'm a truth seeker. Ugh, damn it. Truth seekers were quite common demons who were unable to lie. At the same time, they also gave off an influence of trust, which made people be the angel or demon or apparently seraphim like Lucifer tell secrets to them. The combination of being unable to lie and constantly being told secrets often led to your kind ending up alone and hated. Though as bad as this ability was, something about it was intriguing. I'm sorry, my angel. And then awkwardly he patted you on the forehead. Ugh, there, there. How about we just don't talk, okay? This way, no one has to sp There, there. Let's just not talk at all, okay? This way, no one will say anything bad. Okay. Though, after a while, thankfully, you fell asleep soon thereafter. But... When you woke up, hours later, fully regenerated, and you were told by Charlie and Vaggie that, in fact, you were holding on to Lucifer like a cheerleader after a big game did a quarterback, you broke down in tears of embarrassment. Lucifer, however, took it in stride, as he felt his ego thoroughly stroked by you. It was also around then that you finally realized that you and the others won. You had successfully repelled the angels, stopping the first extermination ever, really, and killing hundreds of exorcists in the process. Such a glorious victory. And as such, everyone was filled with motivation and determination happily helping to rebuild the hotel with an enthusiasm you had never seen before in hell. It was multiple days later. Lucifer was lying sideways on his throne, chuckling to himself as he stared at the smartphone Charlie had given him to make calling him more modern. He had discovered texting and internet video streaming for himself. 
But what he liked the most was that the phone came with all the numbers of Charlie's friends pre-installed. Excluding Alistair, of course. Not only did the radio demon refuse to get a mobile phone, but also the two men despised each other. And sure, the privilege of having the king of hell on speed dial was mostly respectfully ignored by everyone. There was one exception. Not including his daughter. And that was you. Like two teenagers, the two of you had been chatting with each other. At first, simply because, since you couldn't lie, you were much more honest about what was happening with his daughter than even Charlie herself. But also, he kept thinking about how adorable you had looked when you had cuddled with his arm. Even though he wasn't ready yet to admit it to himself. He was thinking about you every night before sleeping. In a classy, non-lewd way, of course. After all, the man had standards. Unlike you, of course. You were crushing hard. Both attracted to him personally, while also finding it super hot that you were talking to THE Lucifer, Satan himself. If your Christian mom would see you right now, she'd rotate in her grave. Lucifer chuckled at the shenanigans you were telling him. Apologize, sir. Lucifer screamed, almost dropping his phone. What, 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 Prim? What are you doing here? I've cleared the thought floors on it, sir. Well, clean the fourth one. The imp butler tilted his head. Sir, we don't have a fourth floor. What should I tell you what is wrong with you, sir? You have provided your duties as a resident, and you have even visited your workshop. Your ducks must feel quite lonely without you, sir. Uh, I, well, I, he grunted. I, I've been working on something. What's her name, sir? Lucifer jumped, blushing hard. What the hell are you talking about? The last time you acted like this was when your daughter had just been born. As such, I am forced to deduce that you are talking to a woman. And I assume that she is much younger than you, sir. I... well... I... Priminger's face was as neutral and non-judgmental as ever. Fine. Her name is Kelly. She is a Cinnaborn demon, one of those that cannot lie. She is super cute. She managed to kill an angel during the last exhibition. I found her buried beneath the rubble of the hotel. She helped rebuilding and all that, but she was also super hurt, so I gave her comfort while she was regenerating, and she's super sweet and super cute. Oh my god, I was holding her hand, and... Then Charlie gave me this phone with all the numbers of her friends, and I just couldn't help myself. After Charlie explained how everything worked, I just had to text her. I I I'm using a fake name, of course. She thinks I'm just some guy, but here, look. Lucifer held up the phone. It showed a picture of you in PJs. The accompanying text being, the PJs you ordered for me arrived. The fluffy sa. I know, right? Pink looks super good on her. I'm even... Perhaps I come by the hotel and tend at the fact that I'm actually the guy she has been chatting with. Uh, sir... Giddy like a child, Lucifer kicked his feet into the air as he hugged his phone. I'm so happy, Prim. Sir... What? Perhaps this is what you have been looking for. Lucifer blinked perplexed. What do you mean, Prim? Priminger's head tilted to the side. Um, has it been several years, or eight by now, that your wife and you have separated? 
Lucifer Gold. Perhaps this is a chance to find someone else. Uh, perhaps her color. I, I haven't thought of that, said Lucifer, his voice suddenly super serious. Omar, haven't thought of it like that. So, may I? Preminger held on his hand. Gulping, the King of Hell offered his phone. With a very serious expression, the imp typed lightning fast. It was so quick, Lucifer's eyes widened in surprise. Uh, what are you telling her? But the moment Lucifer said that, the imp was already re-offering the phone. Lucifer's eyes filled with tears as he read. Prim, that is the most beautiful love confession poem I've ever read. It was 200 words long, too. And most surprisingly of all, it actually sounded like something Lucifer would write. The fallen angel stared at Prim. How did you do that? <clears throat> I apologize for this word, sir, but I'm just the best fucking butler hell has ever said, sir. The imp bowed graciously before his master. Meanwhile, as we stared at your phone, tears were wallowing up in your eyes. You knew fallen but won't get up 666 had a crush on you, that much was obvious, but... You never expected him to write such a beautiful poetry. With shaking hands, you typed, Did you really mean that? With a pleading emoji. The facial expression seemed fitting. In response, you got a gif of a 3D animated cow with the text below flashing, Perhaps. And then you typed, well, I'm in the hotel still. I practically never leave it. I mean, I'm a little of a liability with my ability and all. Fallen but won't get up 666 was the closest thing to a boyfriend you ever had in hell. No one wanted you since you were a truth seeker and he was also the first who didn't mind it. He didn't mind it. You squealed happily, unable to contain your excitement. It was ten minutes later. You were sitting in the hotel lobby. He said he'd be coming over. But left one question open. How did you actually realize you were talking to THE Lucifer without him even knowing? Well, when your relationship with I have fallen but won't get up 666 started, you had showed Charlie the texts and his number, which caused her to laugh and tell you that that's the number of her dad. Of course she would have never admitted that if it wasn't for your power. And she even went as far as to tell you to better just delete him. But you didn't. Instead, you opted to look sad and disappointed, which Charlie took as a satisfactory answer. Even though it wasn't an answer at all. After all... You would have lied otherwise, and told her that you wouldn't delete it. Giddy, you were sitting there, curious as to how Lucifer would deal with the situation. Moments later, you watched him enter the hotel lobby. With a grin of superiority, he looked around. There was no one here, but you. He sighed in a very fake way, as if it was a burden that you were here, and with a smile that clearly was meant to seem as if he wanted to say, I'm only going to interact with you out of courtesy. He approached you. With one hand, he swiped the sofa cushion next to yours before sitting down, hands folded on his walking cane. For a while, he just stared while you really, really, really try to contain your smile and excitement. Waiting for someone? Mm, Callie, wasn't it? 
he asked casually. Yeah, uh, I'm waiting for someone special. Oh, really? Must be really special then, huh? Hugh nodded. How special? Well, damn it, you could feel your curse activating. When you desperately wanted to lie or at least keep the truth at bay, it manifested in temporary mental blackouts. To fight against the urge, you chose to word the truth differently. You really needed to think here. He is, um, one of a kind? Your brain felt like it was splitting apart. Oh, really? We've been talking for a few days uh, over the phone. Not a lie, texting by modern definitions has replaced talking. Though, hearing you nonchalantly talk about it like that... Disappointed, Lucifer went... Oh. It sounded so not special coming out of your mouth. Your teeth ground, your right foot twitching uncontrollably. He is super handsome. Your face turned red, and that's when the first cracks on Lucifer's face appeared. He never sent you pictures. Mm, pretty. And powerful. Finally, he noticed your conniptions. You began chewing your lower lip, left eye twitching. You mumbled, and a little old fashioned, but in a hot way. You inhaled loudly through your mouth, holding your breath. And while he physically, or mentally, wasn't feeling the same pain as you, he did feel the urge to ask the next question. Whispering in your ear, he asked. And just out of curiosity, could he be the king of hell? You opened your mouth to say yes, but as you inhaled, he pressed his lips on yours. Your yes, coming out in the form of a muffled yelp. He didn't kiss you for long. Practically only a peck. Sure, he was a little surprised that you got behind his little ruse. And still, feeling your skin touch his angelic, soft, perfect lips with your sweaty, little, greasy, nervous demon hide... It was enough to make one go crazy. He almost came just from that simple touch. And as he pulled away, you were sobbing wet mess. Lucifer, meanwhile, exhaled through his nose, amused. He still got it, even after seven years. It was difficult to contain himself. So, Kelly, what now? You said yes to meeting up with Satan, no less. Your lips quivered excitedly, body violently shaking. Oh my god, just tell him already you wanna suck his dick! For a moment there was dead silence in the lobby. Behind the bar stood Husker, bottle of booze in hand. Had he been here the entire time? Yes, he had been. The cat had drunk himself into blacking out and had been halfway snoring behind the bar out of eye and earshot. This fucking middle school shit is getting on my fucking nerves. Angrily he spread out his arms, his wings flapping. And take that for your forced fucking honesty, bitch. Lucifer looked at you. Um, is he right? Of course I am. Mm, he is. Uh, uh, please, K. 
Can we? You huff desperately. <sighs> Don't worry, Lucifer. I won't tell Charlie or the porn star. You two can do whatever the fuck you want. The cat admitted, knowing full well that your ability was working on him. With the dumbest of smiles, he watched as Lucifer stood up from the sofa, holding out his hand for you to take. Well, it's not like I can be dishonest and say no, can I? You took his hand, and he almost managed to keep in a comment of his. <laughs> Sweaty palms. How cute. The admin... Admitting that, it caused him to blush in embarrassment. Things did happen, so I'm nervous. I mean, uh, I'm about to, you know. He put a finger on your lips, making you squeak. I know. Don't worry. You don't have to say it. Please scare me. You said the moment his hand retreated from your mouth. My feet, I mean, my legs, they feel like jelly. I can't walk anymore. Oh, God. Oh, for fuck's sake, grunted Husk. As he watched Lucifer swipe you off your feet. Not like I can keep any secrets around you. On to your bedroom. Mm, oh, yeah, you cheered. Uh, this is a fucking kindergarten, grunted Husk. Thank you for watching my video until the very end. But before we end the video completely, I would like to shout out all of my wonderful channel members. Zachary, Rennie Whiting, Talia May, Chantel Johnson, Cakes Minx, Magnolia Iridium, Anonymous Weep, Dees Nuts, Ash Wisdom, Nicodemus D, The Tribute, Galaxia, Spammy, Raylan, Deathhund, Melofia, Muffin, Aruna, Meow Meow Person, Cherry Red Bunny, Cat Cove, Kaya Abyss, Bit Bit, Sleepy Tau, Hella, Nexorist, and AJ Anime Girl. Thank you for your support. It's greatly appreciated.